Hey Faith Family, welcome to the Beyond Sunday podcast at Calvary Bible, where we go beyond the Sunday sermon to explore some rabbit holes and to bring some biblical truths to the surface. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. Calvary Bible Church, we've got another episode. Pastor Randy. Thanks for having me. I'm glad you're here, especially for my joke of the week. Oh. Here we go. Oh. That's know, that collective groan. From, that, was an, that was an individual groan. Sort of like the collective groan on Sunday when <laughs> you said about the fire drill. Drill. That was funny what you said because everybody was like, oh. Uh, I know. It's like in school. No one wants to do a fire drill. No. Some kids do on nice days, but generally no, no. one wants to do a fire drill. I think we accomplished it. Like I rehearsed in my mind, what should I be doing? Mm-hmm. Running over children mm. and getting out of the building. When we had guests <laughs> along our row, uh, a former student of mine and his family from mm-hmm. Togo, Africa. And they, um, so Michelle and I were talking about, okay, when we go, let's make sure we help this this row yeah. to go out that door you know by the, do. on the piano piano mm-hmm. side, right? Yeah. yeah. None, none at the organ side. That's real because some people aren't going to know what to do. Nope. They're going to rely on us to say, yep. if you're in front of the cameras, go out the piano side door. If you're behind the cameras, yeah. go out the back door. I'd probably be a little quicker than that and say, follow me. No, there you go. Let's just, just go like this Jesus. way. You're, you're a, not like just Jesus. Just trying to just, be like Jesus. Follow me. Just being a disciple maker. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, how much do pirate earrings cost? Pirate earrings? Earrings. Yeah, you know, those big hoopy ones. The gold. How much do they cost? How much do they cost? Not, not as much as you would think. I, I, a something. Buccaneer. Oh, nice. Yeah, there you go. That was good. Yes. Yeah, a little play on word there. That is a good play on words. Yeah. yeah. I thought so too. Buccaneers, if I remember correctly, they had a good weekend. Speaking <laughs> of the Buccaneers, should we bring that up? Not a good week to bring that joke in. Okay. For the Eagles That's my fans. joke for the day. Yeah. I, <laughs> I like that. The Eagles were a joke. Well, at the beginning, they they did a little better, but they're playing hurt. They got well, best, two, two best receivers down. Yeah. That changes everything. If this were a sports podcast, I would have some comments. You but would. It's not, so, so we keep I'll going. keep them to myself. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. All right, here we go. I have Matthew's, Matthew's text here. Yeah, so Matthew. we have a question that jumps back to last week. So that's allowed. That is allowed. All right. Right. Okay. And uh, then we yeah. have one that jumps into this week. All right, so that's, that's kind of what we're looking at here. Uh, the one that is thankfully, dealing with last week. Thankfully, someone sent in a, a question on time. Yes. 50% of them sent one in on time. Way to go, person. <laughs> nice work. All right, here we go. Uh, this is the question that deals with the, the John the Baptist text when Jesus is rehearsing that in his mm. mind, right? So yeah, the questioner that. wrote, mm-hmm. as, I'm re- as I was reading Isaiah 26 this week, the sermon from Sunday came into my head and there was a disconnect for me. Two things that seemed to be irreconcilable irreconcilable Mm -hmm. opposites, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Here's my question. How do you reconcile Isaiah 26, excuse me, which reads, the New Living Translation, I will say, but for those who are righteous, the way is not steep and rough. You are a God who does what is right, and you smooth out the path ahead of them. Mm -hmm. So how do you reconcile that with 2 Timothy 3.12? Yes, and everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus Jesus will suffer persecution. So we had Mm -hmm. that John the Baptist text. You read two passages which seem to say irreconcilable differences, uh, different, irreconcilably different things. That's a mouthful. Mm -hmm. So how do we reconcile that in the scriptures? Yeah, I think if you go back to the Old Testament and start there, you know that Whatever God is promising his people does not eliminate hardship. So these Old Testament stories are filled Mm -hmm. with trials and trouble and uh, these tight tight spaces or places where you feel like you're you're hemmed in. Mm -hmm. So I think that when you get to this text, like this Isaiah text, that promise of sort of a leveling out of the pathway is... That is God describing what he does to allow a person to accomplish his will. It does not eliminate all trouble. So, for instance, if I use Joseph as an example, Mm -hmm. 
what Joseph experienced from the hand of the Lord does look like he made it to his destination. He accomplished the will of God, mm -hmm. but it included some tremendous hardship. Right. So that's that's one of the ways I would start that answer is to note that this clearing of the pathway, uh, smoothening it over, smoothing out the bumps, whatever you want, whatever, I forget the exact wording of that, but that is not, that's not talking about no difficulties. It's mm -hmm. talking about you can, you can maneuver that terrain and make it to accomplish God's will for his glory. Now, the second thing, and you're, I see you're looking at that text. Mm -hmm. So my second, uh, my second comment about that is, uh, when you're reading the Old Testament, make sure that you are paying attention to, is this prophetic or not? If it's prophetic, it's possible that what you're seeing is you're seeing a look into the future when actually things will be only righteous, mm -hmm. only smooth. healing, mm -hmm. only uh, smooth. Yeah. So that would be my second comment about that, so that you're able to reconcile that promise with what we're experiencing now as the people of God. And according to that New Testament text, if we're living godly, we will suffer persecution. That's because we're still in the context of a life of faith lived out in the kingdom of darkness. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that's, that's probably my two best shots at it. Yeah. And I didn't do a deep dive into Isaiah here. Mm -hmm. uh, I just opened up and glanced. But mm -hmm. um, my question would be, is this talking about a future time? Uh, the beginning of verse 20, mm -hmm. or chapter 26 says, in that day, this song will be sung in the land of Judah. Mm -hmm. uh, and then yeah. it goes on in verse 7 as part of that song. Yeah, um, that's kind of what I was driving at. So if you you take a look at that text and you say, this could be more than likely is prophesying a future complete deliverance, mm -hmm. which means then that verse 7, is that the one that's being uh, yep. asked verse about? Seven. Then verse 7 then becomes much more of a... a uh, what would you say, a literal reading of God erasing a difficult pathway. Mm -hmm. no, it's because he's won, the war is done, the war is over, only righteousness exists, yep. and therefore all of what we face. And I, I read on Sunday a list of sins, you know, my own, but others in the context of our world, the darkness included, and that's all going to be gone. Mm -hmm. So that's that's one way I would reconcile the two. Yeah, good. And um, I think sometimes, and I can definitely be this way, I want the Bible to be black and white, like mm -hmm. very clear to me. Yeah. And the Bible is never as clear as I want it to be. So mm -hmm. when you read a verse like that, Isaiah 26, and then you read one like the Second Timothy 3.12, yeah. you say, those Which aren't... That's not black and which white. Which is it? Yeah, exactly. Which, which is, is it? it? Those are all yeah. different sides of the, the fence there. Mm -hmm. um, and I appreciated that it's kind of a follow-up there mm -hmm. too. Okay. Another way to, I guess, think through what mm -hmm. we're reading. Can we reconcile them by treating Isaiah 26, 7 like a proverb where there are exceptions to the rule? So mm -hmm. um, I, based on what you were saying, I think your answer would be, I'm speaking for you, no, because it's it's not a proverb. It's it's imagery, but it's mm. potentially either talking about a future day, or God's ability to uh, get you to the mm. destination despite mm -hmm. some of the you know the obstacles along the way. Um, yeah, because this isn't because we mm -hmm. in, when the, in the wisdom literature of yeah. the Old Testament, yeah. you read a book like Proverbs and all goes well for the the wise man, but then you get to Ecclesiastes. And mm -hmm. uh, the preacher says, yeah. no, nah, it doesn't always go well for, yeah. for the wise man. Sometimes, you know, chance wins and yeah. that, that guy suffers. Um, so even in there, recognizing that the Proverbs are just talking about life in mm -hmm. through a particular lens and Ecclesiastes is saying, yeah, but there's exceptions to that rule. And I would agree with what, what you just said, except for the chance part. Okay. Yeah. What do you mean? Uh, I mean, I, I think I understood what you were saying. You used the word chance. Mm -hmm. Chance wins. And um, I think you have in wisdom literature, you still have this pulling, you know, you have this pulling of, you know, let's use, you know, lady wisdom 
versus Lady Folly. You've got mm-hmm. this pulling back and forth in Proverbs and you have the way life su- is supposed to be, but it's not always that way. But I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. I don't think Isaiah is doing that. Right. I don't think. Yeah. I think you're better off just seeing the prophetic uh, look forward to a better day, the best day, mm-hmm. new creation day, and then uh, seeing the current day in that Timothy passage where there's going to be persecution. And that also is prophesied as well before the coming of you know, the day. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. And quick clarification. Mm-hmm. I use that word chance because that's like what Ecclesiastes that's what uses. I thought. Yeah, that's he what uses I thought. that word. Now, yeah, that's we what wouldn't say it's yep. chance, yep. random, God's sovereign over yep. that, but, yep. you know, whether the storm strikes Mount Joy or E-Town. That's what I, yeah. Chance. Yep. Um, that's what I thought you were doing. But right here, so for us, like as we're, you know, living beyond Sunday, mm-hmm. Monday to Saturday, mm-hmm. And we we encounter trial and tribulation mm-hmm. and difficulty. Um, when we read a passage like Isaiah, you know, does it should it give us hope? Does it mm-hmm. um, like how does that buoy our soul through you know a storm? Yeah, I would. I I think I would go back to our text though in Matthew and see. Here's I think one of the worst scenes in the Bible. Uh, what's happening to John. I I mean, remember, it's a flashback, so it's recording what happened to John in the past as far as the writing is concerned. I I go back to a text like this, and I see, you know, uh, Jesus is living at that time, having to suffer with us through something like that, and yet he is marching towards uh, his his ultimate mission. Mm -hmm. And so... You know, we're following him. And so I've got a lot of hope in the midst of the turmoil because I do have God uh, God with me, God with us. That's where I would start that hope. But but That's yes, good. that other, yes, uh, reading that prophecy should uh, buoy my hope in a, in a tough day, knowing that this is only a short period of time. This is momentary mm-hmm. light affliction. affliction. Right. So, yeah, that mindset is super helpful. Yeah. Keeps hope alive. Okay. Good. All right. Moving into last week's sermon. All right. Just from this past Sunday. should be more fresh for you. It should. As some people would say, fresher. Okay. Um, Jesus feeding the 5,000. Mm-hmm. We see him meet physical needs but also knowing that he meets spiritual needs. So mm-hmm. here's the question. What does following Jesus mean for us in terms of meeting someone's physical needs, mm-hmm. like eating, and or versus their spiritual needs, like salvation? Yeah, I love the the people around us in our faith family that are so kind to neighbors in need. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have got people that... They go out of their way to physically help. Um, and that's, I think that's the first part of it. But the second part of it, as you know, is just the number of ways in which you can, you can help the person begin to process who Jesus is. All, any number of ways. I mean, in a formal sense, that could be a Bible study. Mm-hmm. Um. You know that's that. I mean, that's one of the uh, the that's one of the best ways to help meet a spiritual need. Uh, so being ready to offer that to a neighbor or to a friend who doesn't know the Lord, inviting someone to church, mm-hmm. um, you know, that doesn't know the Lord. That's that's meeting that spiritual need because you're trying to introduce them to Christ to to other Christians, um, answering their questions that they might have. Uh, without without getting caught into these you know these um, not mindless questions but these questions that God Himself warned us against because they're not productive, um, you know the words that come the phrase that comes to mind endless genealogies is one of those that Jesus uh, that God warns about mm-hmm. you know don't get caught up into those types of things they, mm-hmm. there's just no benefit to that right. uh, so answering questions so those are three or four ways that. You're trying to meet someone's spiritual need. It does have to do with any way in which you are 
trying to make a Christ follower, I would say. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've probably got better ideas than I do about that. Well, yeah, <laughs> not necessarily. Of course I do is the answer, right? <laughs> of course I do, Randall. Yeah. No, I want to tease that, that out a little bit, though. So uh, would, you, uh, would you tip the scales in one way versus the other? as far as meeting someone's physical needs or meeting someone's spiritual needs as far as like, which is more important? Uh, I mean, remember we, our tradition, I mean, you, you never, out, you never outrun your history, right? Remember that you don't out, outrun your history. So whatever your church is, um, mm -hmm. you know, whatever your background, it kind of stays with you. So, you know, historically we would certainly put the heavy emphasis on the spiritual development of a person, giving them the gospel rather than just a meal. So we did that because the pendulum, you know, the pendulum was swinging away from the, what was called a social gospel. So we're swinging that pendulum way away from that. Mm -hmm. And um, to the point where oftentimes we could be rightly accused of, we're not doing the other things God said to do too. So I don't, I, I, I mean, I don't think they should be separate. I think they should be together. I mean, you're meeting the, the you know, you're, you're helping the person, you're loving your neighbor, but you're also trying to make a disciple. I, I mean, I'd rather not, although I'm going to put the weight on the gospel, of course, if I have, you know, mm -hmm. you know, if a person is dying, what do they need more? Do they need the meal or do they need Jesus? Well, if the meal saves them and they accept Jesus, that's really good. <laughs> but yeah. you, you kind of, I'm kind of yeah. fudging a bit. I, I, well, I hate to put you know, emphasis on the one to the neglect yeah, of the other. What I think that's what we did. Right. And what I'm appreciating though, is that I framed the question in a way where they're separate and you're saying you kind of can't separate them. They I, really should go. Together. I wouldn't, I, I just think, yeah. I think you're, you're not, you're not loving the person. Uh, if you only are concerned about sharing Christ with them and that's it, mm -hmm. if they have a real need that you can meet. And I, <laughs> I was going to say, I bet, there's scripture about that, right? Yeah. Doesn't James, I mean, James, which is mm -hmm. one of the most practical books, mm -hmm. mentions this type of mindset. So I think we want to make sure that we're loving the person as a whole person, knowing full well that having Christ and eternity with God is the utmost important thing we could ever do for a person, mm -hmm. help them down that path. But yeah. So, you know, I'm just thinking back to what Jesus says to the disciples in that moment, he says, they don't need to go away. Yeah. You give them something to eat. Yeah. I wish I could have played a clip of that W.A. Criswell sermon that I listened to. Oh, I didn't yeah. even know you could do that. And I should have. You can find anything. Hmm. But I had not been to this site where so many of his sermons are on, on audio. Okay. So to hear his voice from 1966, and, mm -hmm. and you may not know him at all, but he is a famous Baptist, Southern Baptist preacher at First Baptist Dallas, which is a, a you know, not only a big church, but a, a, a church with a huge reputation in the Southern Baptist Convention. And back in the day, Criswell was like our hero expositor, okay. preached through the Bible, mm -hmm. I mean, through the whole Bible. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I don't, I don't need to tell all the stories about that, but he was just such a fiery preacher and um it would have been nice to to play that few minutes of when he got to this point where you know they don't need to go away and he went on a few minutes of a tear of they don't need to they don't need to go away look at what we have for them here at the church mm -hmm. and again in that southern baptist tradition very strong ecclesiology and strong in the church strong in the local church mm -hmm. and uh church membership and all that and but he he did a nice job for a few minutes and that yeah they don't need to go away we have everything you know to help them yeah and i tried to do you know, i certainly didn't do you know do it justice like he did but tried to hit a little bit of that they don't they don't need to go we have disciple making to do mhm mm and that and i think that stuck out to me in this story is that Jesus is meeting both needs, like we just talked about. Mm -hmm. He recognizes that people get hungry. Yeah, but don't, didn't you? I mean, and I can't remember the guy. I mean, you know, I got three or four of these guys I read all the time for mm -hmm. these messages, and they're so helpful all the time. And um, I, oh, I think it was uh, he's usually um, 
referred to as Bishop Ryle, the old English preacher. J.C. J.C. Yeah, J.C. Mm-hmm. Ryle. I rarely read this, these guys, but I thought, ah, let's see if he preached on this. I'd like to know what he did with this because he's got some interesting stuff. And, um, and, and to think that Jesus is feeding, he's feeding them all. Mm-hmm. And he knows that they're not going to. They're not going to. Most of them are going to reject him. Yeah. So there's a. You know, there's an interesting right. thought, right? That mm-hmm. here's Jesus m- meeting their physical needs, wanting desperately to give them himself, mm-hmm. knowing that they won't accept him, and he does it anyway. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if there's a. Yeah. Is there? A, is, I was going to say, is there a moral in that? Is there a lesson in that? Is there a? Yeah. I'm sure a lot of people could do. There's a, a biblical principle in that, but that's yeah. powerful well, to me that he did that. Don't be disheartened, because I mean, how many times do you care for someone and pray for them and meet a need, yeah. and they just don't respond? Yeah. And you shake your head and say, "Oh, I wish they would respond," yeah. but it doesn't mean you stop loving mm-hmm. them, caring mm-hmm. for them. And ministering yeah. physically and or spiritually. Michelle would be a good example of this. The times when we've been traveling somewhere and there's a person asking for money at an mm-hmm. intersection or something, she is quick to help. And w- we have no idea what their spiritual life is like, mm-hmm. whether they'll ever accept the Lord. And there's no, there's almost no way to say, oh, by the way, I'm doing this because I'm a Christian and God loves you, although that only took seconds. So I yeah. could, I suppose I could pull that off. You could. I could hand yeah. them, you know, she hands me the money from the other side of the vehicle. I roll down the window, hand it and say, I just want you to know that God loves you. I hope you know Jesus. Yeah. You know, that's, that yeah. takes seconds. So does, I could yeah. do that. You could. Yeah. And the moral of that story is that Michelle is the one that has all the money. She has the money <laughs> and the heart for that person. Yeah. So that's yeah. two morals of that story. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and as we follow Jesus, that's, that, those are the footsteps we're following in. Yeah. Um, just, yeah. Good yeah. Example. And I don't ever want to go the other, you know, someone hears that and says, yeah, but, you know, it's more important to give them the gospel. And I, again, I would say, no, just love the person. You know, what do they need right then? Mm-hmm. And um, who knows what, you know, Jesus didn't have a problem with doing that, even yeah. though they weren't going to accept him. Right. But yeah, that's good. And there's no, and there's no evidence either. And this is what's fascinating to me. It would have been better for me, actually, if I'm reading this story and I got it in front of me, if I read that and, you know, um, then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass and taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and said a blessing. If he'd have preached a quick gospel message right then, you know, a 30 second message, that would have helped me a lot <laughs> to say, okay, before I give you this meal, mm-hmm. let me give you my real food. Mm-hmm. But he doesn't do that. And there's nothing in there that says he told the disciples, as you're handing out the meal, give them a track. Right. I mean, there's, it's not there. It's not that it couldn't happen. It's just that it's interesting that God yeah. said, no, that's not the way I'm recording it. Yeah, that's good. Well, I was going to shut us down, but you just... I'm done. You keep going. Yeah, that's good. I like it. That's, yeah, that's really helpful. Well, that's the goal. We're trying to be helpful, taking the sermon from Sunday or two Sundays ago. And talking about what that means yeah. for us midweek here mm-hmm. as we all go through our days. So, okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you for listening uh, all the way to the end. If you have any questions, you can email them into podcast at cbcmj.com and we'll tackle them as best we can. Yeah. And hopefully narratives like this help us to show compassion to other people that desperately need healing in their broken world. Yeah. Because it all starts with this compassion. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Straight exactly. from the notes. Nice job. <laughs> Thank you. I'm just reading it. There we go. All right. We love you guys. We'll see you on Sunday. Thanks again for joining us on today's episode. And remember, our Sunday sermons are meant to lead us to a life of worship beyond Sunday.